It's rare that a tiny piece of hardware, a metal nut no larger than a coin, sparks international headlines. But several years ago, that's precisely what occurred. At the center of this improbable story stood a small Japanese company called Hard Lock Industry Company Limited, with just 49 employees and no flashy manufacturing complexes. They created something quietly revolutionary, a nut that resists loosening from vibration using a traditional Japanese wedging principle. Branded as the never-loosening nut, this precision fastener became essential to some of the most high-stakes engineering projects on Earth. The company's nuts have been used on Japan's Shinkansen high-speed trains for over 30 years, boasting a 0% failure rate, and have remained securely in place on the Great Sido Bridge since 1988. High-speed bullet trains in Australia, Britain, China, Poland, and South Korea rely on these fasteners, and they help Taiwan high-speed rail achieve a record of no serious accidents since service began in 2007. It wasn't glamorous, but it was brilliant, a perfect example of precision Japanese engineering. Media in Japan and the West hailed it as virtually irreplaceable. Reports claimed that even with blueprints revealed, the nuts couldn't be replicated because the company had accumulated unique technology and know-how over the years, with different corresponding eccentricity for different sizes and materials. At the time, China was rapidly constructing the world's largest high-speed rail network. But without access to this specialized fastener, some commentators warned the entire system was fragile, destined to fail, or worse, fall apart. So this was never merely about metal and threads. It was about dependence. It was about doubt. Could China build world-class systems without relying on others for the smallest, most technical components? The stakes were higher than they appeared, and the world was watching. To understand why this nut generated such attention, we must examine the world of high-speed rail where trains travel at over 350 kilometers per hour. At those speeds, even the tiniest mechanical issue can cascade into disaster. It's not merely about velocity, it's about stability. Think of it this way. Imagine driving a vehicle at maximum speed on an unpaved road. Now imagine doing that for thousands of kilometers daily without ever decelerating. That's what these trains endure, constant motion, relentless vibration. And under that strain, conventional nuts and bolts tend to loosen over time, sometimes catastrophically. That's where anti-loosening fasteners become essential. They don't simply hold components together, they protect lives. If even one bolt shakes loose, it can trigger a chain reaction of failure. In engineering terms, these nuts aren't minor, they're mission critical. Japan's answer was elegant. The hard lock nut, developed in 1974, uses a dual nut system, a convex nut with an eccentrically formed boss and a perfectly circular concave nut. When the nuts wedge together, it creates a powerful locking effect not just to each other but to the bolt shaft, achieving anti-loosening performance. One nut locks into position and the second presses against it at an angle, creating tension that resists loosening almost like two hands twisting in opposite directions to maintain tightness. But here's the twist. That concept wasn't entirely novel. Centuries ago, Chinese carpenters employed similar techniques in woodworking joints known as mortise and tenon structures. These involved interlocking shapes that created grip through friction and angled pressure, very similar in principle to what the hard lock nut accomplishes with metal. So the concept of resisting movement through interlocking design wasn't foreign to China. What was new, and what China needed to determine, was how to translate that ancient principle into modern industrial strength. Because for China's massive rail ambitions, depending on someone else's technology, especially something so small, yet so vital, represented a vulnerability they couldn't afford to maintain. Japan's hard lock nut truly was clever engineering, simple, elegant, and incredibly effective. But even brilliant designs have limitations. In real-world applications, especially in demanding environments like high-speed rail, the hard lock nut revealed a significant problem. 
it wears out relatively quickly. Despite its tight grip, the constant pounding of vibration, temperature fluctuations, and mechanical stress eventually degrade its locking power. That means nuts must be replaced regularly, sometimes every few months. Now imagine that problem multiplied across more than 40,000 kilometers of railway, the largest high-speed rail network on Earth. That's China. Thousands of trains, millions of fasteners. Replacing each one routinely isn't merely expensive. It's a logistical nightmare. And worse, these nuts had to be imported. China could only purchase never-loosening nuts from Hardlock Industry Company Limited the small Japanese company with just 45 employees. This created multiple headaches for Chinese engineers. High maintenance costs, constant replacements meant more workers, more downtime, more spending. Slowed expansion, scaling up a rail network becomes harder when one tiny component causes delays. Foreign dependence, relying on a foreign supplier for something so essential meant China's entire system had a potential choke point. It was like attempting to construct a skyscraper only to discover the best bolts came from someone else's factory, and they wouldn't sell you enough on time or at favorable prices. So while Japan's nut solved one problem, vibration, it introduced another fragility at scale. For China's ambitions, that wasn't acceptable. They needed a solution that could last longer, cost less, and be manufactured domestically. And they needed it urgently. The turning point came high in the mountains, literally. When China began constructing the Qinghai-Tibet Railway, it confronted some of the most extreme engineering conditions on Earth. This wasn't just about altitude sickness for workers or permafrost making ground unstable. The region threw everything at builders, freezing cold, wild temperature swings, intense vibration from trains, and almost no easy maintenance access. And in this unforgiving terrain, the Japanese-made nuts started failing. They simply weren't engineered for this level of punishment. Worse, replacing them wasn't practical. Imagine flying technicians into remote mountain zones just to change bolts every few months. China's engineers recognized they couldn't afford relying on foreign technology anymore, so they pivoted rapidly. This was no longer merely a rail project. It became a national engineering challenge, create a fastener that could survive anything. And they accomplished it, not by copying Japan's design, but by fundamentally changing the approach. As early as 2002, China developed a never-loose self-locking nut, specifically for use in the extremely difficult conditions of the Qinghai-Tibet Railway. China's answer was the self-locking nut, a feat of material science and precision engineering. Instead of relying on two nuts and eccentric force, Chinese engineers designed self-locking nuts composed of a nut and a washer, with advantages of anti-loosening and anti-vibration. The design utilized proprietary alloys that deform microscopically under pressure. That micro-deformation creates grip without wear. Multi-surface spiral contact distributes stress evenly across the nut to prevent cracking or loosening. And a smart washer system responds to vibration. When backward motion is detected, it increases friction automatically, locking itself tighter. In short, this wasn't merely a better nut. It was a smarter nut. It didn't require frequent maintenance, it didn't need high torque to install, and it didn't wear out in months. For the first time, China possessed a fastener that worked better, lasted longer, and could be produced entirely domestically. Necessity had forced China to innovate, and in doing so, it built something the world had never seen. Let's compare them directly. Japan's hard lock nut, while brilliant in concept, required specific installation procedures. The convex nut must be tightened to appropriate torque. Then the concave nut installed manually until it no longer turns, ensuring a gap of about one thread pitch between nuts. For rail systems, that meant time, labor, and constant vigilance. For a country like China operating the world's largest high-speed rail network, it represented a recipe for inefficiency. China's self-locking nut inverted that equation. First, it lasts dramatically longer. In testing under extreme vibration, heat, and mechanical load, China's version remained secure for years.
not months. That alone slashed maintenance budgets and labor hours. Second, it installs more easily. Thanks to its micro deformation design and integrated washer, it requires less torque. That's transformative. It means faster installation, fewer errors, and critically, full compatibility with automated assembly lines. You don't need a highly trained technician with a torque wrench, just machinery and programming. Third, it's safer. The nut doesn't loosen over time, even in ultra-high vibration environments like railways, military vehicles, or aircraft. And if it attempts to, the washer adds friction, like an automatic seat belt for machines. Finally, it's more economical to scale. China can manufacture these domestically at high volume without import dependencies. The result isn't just a superior product, but strategic advantage, more control, lower cost, and faster deployment. What's remarkable isn't merely that China caught up, it's that it surpassed the original. While the world doubted whether China could replicate a Japanese design, Chinese engineers were constructing something Japan hadn't even conceived yet. And that shift from following to setting the pace changed everything. Initially, the self-locking nut was built for survival, a solution to keep high-speed trains operating safely across frozen plateaus and seismic zones. But rapidly, its success sparked something larger, a quiet revolution across global industries. What started as rail innovation soon spread to aerospace, automotive engineering, military hardware, and even nuclear reactors. Anywhere you find high stress, vibration, or extreme conditions, Chinese fasteners began appearing. Why? Because these weren't just nuts anymore. They became precision tools designed for modern complexity. Consider magnetic locking nuts, an evolution that eliminates tool requirements entirely. Using built-in magnets, engineers can tighten or release them remotely or in confined spaces. Perfect for shipbuilding, nuclear energy facilities, or satellites where every millimeter counts and safety is non-negotiable. Then came dual locking nuts, hybrid marvels combining two independent mechanisms. They lock as securely as self-locking versions, but can be disassembled easily, making them ideal for frequently serviced machinery like automotive engines or modular industrial systems. And China isn't merely using these fasteners, it's exporting them. From bridges in Southeast Asia to automotive factories in Europe and even aerospace facilities in Africa, Chinese fasteners are now integrated into critical infrastructure worldwide. Nations that once viewed China as a supplier of low-cost labor now purchase its high-end precision components. Even Japan, yes, the birthplace of the original never-loosening nut, uses hard lock nuts in railways in China, demonstrating the technological exchange has become more complex than simple dependency narratives suggest. The former student has become teacher and competitor simultaneously. This isn't merely about who manufactures a superior nut. It's about a power shift. China is no longer following. It's leading with science, with scale, and with strategy. So what can a humble nut teach us about the future of global industry? Quite a lot, actually. Because this story of a tiny metal fastener is really the story of China's industrial transformation. It started with dependency, with doubt, with critics saying China could never replicate the precision of Japan's never-loosening nut, that without it, their trains might fall apart and their ambitions would stall. But that narrative didn't hold. Instead, China responded not with imitation, but with innovation. It developed something stronger, smarter, and more durable. Not merely a product, but a platform for progress. What began as a challenge in rail engineering grew into a national competitive edge across industries. From high-speed trains to advanced military systems, from bridges to spacecraft, China now controls a key building block of modern technology, the fastener itself. And with control of small components comes power over large systems. Because when you own core components, the things every system relies on but no one notices, you hold quiet leverage over global supply chains, over what gets built, how quickly, and at what cost. That's not merely engineering. 
That's strategy. So next time you see a bullet train gliding across Chinese plains, or a bridge being constructed in Africa with Chinese engineering, remember, it's not just steel or concrete. Somewhere inside, holding it all together, is a tiny nut. A piece of hardware so overlooked it was once dismissed as minor, but now stands as symbol of something much greater. A nation's determination, its ingenuity, and its ascent to technological leadership. The revolution doesn't always announce itself with fanfare. Sometimes it arrives quietly, one fastener at a time, transforming the world from the inside out.